Welcome back. An exhibition to raise funds for injured conflict photographer Jean Silva will take place next week. Silva lost parts of both his legs in a landmine explosion in Afghanistan recently. His work as a member of the local Big Bang Bang Club earned him respect all over the world. And then four members uh, uh, of the group took moving photographs during the uprisings in the early 90s. Joining us now is the organizer of the event, Carl Malta. It's good to have you, Carl. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you very much. Good to be here. First and foremost, how is Ra? How is he feeling at this point? He's, uh, he's doing better. I spoke to uh, his friend and longtime uh, collaborator, Greg Marinovich, who's visiting him in hospital. His wife, Vivian, is also there in the States. Um, he's been in intensive care now for three weeks, um, but he's off a ventilator um, and doing better. So apart from the injuries to his legs, he also suffered a number of other really serious injuries. Uh, and if it wasn't for the superb medical staff and the troops on the ground, um, he wouldn't have come through it, but yeah. doing better. Yeah. In terms of, of, of expectations for recovery, I mean, how, how, are, how are, what are doctors saying? What is Greg saying that he's, that he's, how he's doing? Literally years, you know, months and years. It's a very, very long process. So after stabilizing, you know, the situation at the moment, having to fit prosthetics in years to come, so it's a long process. Yeah. No, it, it, it was one of the most devastating stories. I think it really entirely shocked Obviously, South Africa a lot because because of his roots here in South Africa mm -hmm. and because of the incredible work that he did. And I mean, just to, to remind viewers about about where he comes from and about the work that he's done. Just tell us a bit more about him. Well, his first job was actually at the Alberton uh, Chronicle, where he started taking photographs and eventually convinced them to uh, to let him cover the uh, violence into Causa. Then him and uh, three other members of the Bang Bang Club started taking photographs in the 90s of uh, the violence that was happening in South Africa, particularly clashes uh, between the political parties. Um, and a film of that has been made actually and was launched at Toronto Film Festival this year. Um, and, uh, and then it's been working and covering wars in uh, Iraq, Afghanistan for the New York Times. Amazing. I'm busy, while you're talking to me, I'm looking at the photographs that we're putting out on air. Great. Can we put those, can we put it back? Oh, here's okay. another one. Perhaps you can talk to us about the other two that were earlier, but let's talk about this one. What, what is this photograph? It's, uh, it's a marsh, um, a marsh yacht in, uh, in Afghanistan. Um, and, I mean, a lot of the, the photographs he's taken talks about themes such as martyrdom, war, obviously, um, and are very moving because he's not focused on just one group. You know, he's taken photographs and been with uh, the American troops, with Sunnis, with all kinds of different um, people in the conflict. Yeah, um, this is a spectacular photograph. Where was this now? Um, I think this one is also from when he was in Iraq, yeah. uh, which is sort of, I think, 90, uh, you know, Iraq, and it was a couple of years back. So after Iraq, he went to, went to the war in Afghanistan. Yeah. The photos that we're going to be showing is from a few of the war zones and then also the ones that he took uh, in South Africa. Uh, we've got a professional curator who will be on hand as well to talk a little bit more about the images yeah. uh, and give people some more information about them. I mean, and this is, this is such incredible photography that, uh, that, that you'll be able to witness and be able to go and see it yourself. And I think it also talks about why photojournalists are so important and what they contribute uh, to a society. You know, when you look back at, at the photographs that, that he took in the 90s in South Africa, uh, the, one of the other members of the Bank, Bank Club with, with Greg and, and Jua is a guy uh, called uh, Carter who unfortunately committed suicide but he took that very iconic picture of an African child with a vulture. Yes, um, yes. And I mean it's amazing when you, when you think of those images. Yeah. Jua himself, in fact this one that we're showing now is uh, of a soldier uh, dragging another one from, um, from sniper fire. And the soldier being dragged um, and his family actually wrote into the New York Times um, after he recovered, saying that this particular series of photographs helped him understand the situation yeah. and better deal with what happened in, in, in the war. More importantly, I mean, I'm just looking at the photographs. It, it, it's one thing seeing what's portrayed in the photographs, but it's another thing to actually see the situations that Ja found himself in. Mm. That is unbelievable. It's one thing that, I, you know, we take for granted mm. when you look at photographs mm. and you just see what the life, how you put your, your life at risk in order to just capture Absolutely. that moment. And, and, and this is the position yeah. And the in. focus that these guys, you know, maintain throughout, uh, throughout that situation to produce the images for the rest of us. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm also amazed by the story that after Joa, you know, was, uh, was injured in this landmine explosion, which was tied, by the way, to a, to a homemade uh, fertilizer bomb, which fortunately didn't detonate. Yeah. 
um, but that he asked for a cigarette and carried on taking photographs of the medics who were helping him. I know. And I mean, to be able to do that is just... Unreal. I remember that these, those photographs were circulating within days yeah, on absolutely. the internet and Twitter and whatever yeah. else, people saying, just look at what yeah. this man came up with in the position that he was yeah. in. Are you, Times, well, Are you going to get them? Well, the New York Times have them, so it'd be interesting to see what they, what they do with them. I mean, they'll, yeah. they'll certainly be very, very powerful images. Yeah, indeed. Let, let's talk more about the exhibition now. Obviously, this is just a touch of uh, mm. a few photographs that we mm. are displaying now. Um, you're going to have a, a lot more ranging over his career. Yep. And, and let's talk about in terms of, of entrance, money, right. all of that stuff. A free entrance, uh, it's on the 24th, which is a month after the accident happened. Uh, it's at Atana House um, in uh, Parktown. It's open to the public. It's uh, 4.30. Um, they can go to our company website, uh, which is Atana, E-T-A-N-A, dot C-O dot Z-A. Yeah. got full details there. We're going to show uh, and auction off some of his vintage prints uh, from the 90s, which, uh, which means that he himself printed them. Yes. Um, and they're collector's items. They've uh, been kindly um, given to us by Gavin Rook, um, who is uh, his agent here in South Africa. And then we're going to be having for sale and just people to see a whole range of his works, particularly Iraq, Afghanistan war, and then also uh, South Africa in the 90s. Greg Marinovich will be there. He would have just arrived back from Sing Joao. Yeah. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about their work together. Uh, he'll also be signing copies of the book that they did, uh, The Bang Bang Club. Yes. Um, so, yeah, there'll be a, a lot of interaction for people. In terms of the funds that are raised, because we know that he was working or uh, selling to the, the New York Times, who, ha as you told me, mm. fair, are covering all mm. of his medical costs mm. while he's, he is in hospital. Mm. This money that's raised from this exhibition, what are mm. you using this for? So, uh, I mean, ultimately, Joao will decide what the, what the money is used for. Um, and if it's not needed for any of his medical costs, then we anticipate it will be for causes close to his heart. Um, and the most obvious one will be something linked to, to landmines, either landmine victims or the clearance of landmines. You know, there are countries very close to us where there's still a lot of problems relating to landmines. Yeah. Um, but Joao will ultimately decide, and it will be something, I would imagine, linked to, to this course. You also mentioned a photograph that he took with uh, Princess Diana. Mm, yeah. Again, going all that way back. Yeah. It's, 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 it's quite ironic how it's almost done a full circle and yeah. come back, and, and this is... This yeah. is the situation he finds himself in. Yeah, and that was in the late 90s, 97. I think it's the year that she died that uh, he took those photographs of her in Angola and where she did a lot of, of work with landmine victims. He himself has been injured before. This is his second injury, but the previous one was, was far less serious, with shrapnel in his face. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again, these guys are, are going through the conditions that, uh, that the frontline front soldiers experience. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I urge anybody to get down. I mean, just having a look at, I think we're only showing you seven photographs. How many mm. photographs do you estimate will be on display? We're going to be displaying 41 and okay. uh, from the period uh, with the wars in Iraq and, uh, and Afghanistan. And then we'll also be uh, auctioning off, I think, probably about 12 of the vintage prints. Yeah. Well, listen, if you want to know more about uh, Jean Silva, this is just a touch of his work and what this man stands for. Read the Bang Bang Club. You know that there's a movie being made that is going to be released uh, shortly, I imagine, yes. next year sometime. Yeah. I'm not even, not even sure, sure of a release date. You obviously know. Um, it was shown in Toronto this year, and I think it's going to be released in South Africa next year. It might also be earlier, but okay. it was released in Toronto at the Film Festival this year. Right. Thank you so much for joining us. Karen Nolte, who is the organizer of Snapshots of a Hidden Word. Uh, there is going to be a tribute for Jean Silva, as we've been talking about, 24th of November at Tana House Park. Give me that website.